produced a tank. It would be the T-72, seventh greatest ever tank. The 70s was when the gulf between Soviet and Western ideologies seemed to be at its widest. And the symbol of Rusky threat was the T-72 tank. The T-72 is a tank that was built by the Soviets to fight World War III. The T-72 was designed to form the spearhead of a Soviet push into Western Europe. The ultimate attack tank. The T-72 was definitely something to be worried about. It had thick armor, good mobility, a big gun, and a very low profile. It's about a foot lower than a British tank and about 18 inches lower than the contemporary American tank. So it's a difficult target to hit, especially if it's coming at you fast in great numbers, fully tracks up with infantry behind it. Oh, well that sounds pretty exciting. You look at the T-72, it's wide, it's squat, it's got a big gun. And when you're driving it, you actually feel aggressive. It, you, you just wants to get up and go. You feel part of the tank. And it's fun to drive. The biggest surprise that we had with the T-72 actually was its gun, which was a 125mm calibre gun. And that would have caused us big problems. The Soviet barrel was 5mm wider than Western barrels, and that meant bigger shells and more armour penetration but the revolutionary bit was that the gun was fed shells by an automatic loading system. The big green lump is the back of the gun, which is also coupled to an autoloader. Right. The ammunition comes up through these two flaps in the floor, which is lifted up to about here. Rammer comes out of the back of the turret, pushes the warhead in. With having an autoloader, you don't need the loader, which means you can reduce the size of the tank. You can make the tank smaller, which is a harder target to hit. Removing a crew member immediately reduced the weight of the tank by about 12 tons, the weight of the armour needed to protect a crewman. This increased the tank's speed and manoeuvrability. But the T-72 went further, shrinking the interior so that even the remaining crew had to be specially selected. If you're taller than 5'6", about here, my wife's taller than that, you can't fit inside a T-72, it's munchkin land, all right? The T-72 seemed to fit perfectly into the Western stereotype of the Soviet tank, a brutal, efficient killing machine. But was T-72 really all it was cracked up to be? Intelligence officers are scared for a living. The intelligence officer looks at the piece of Soviet hardware and goes, Oh my God! The Russians have finally figured it out. That's the deadliest thing on the battlefield. We're screwed if we have to go against it. Then we get hold of it. We find it's a death trap like everything else the Russians have ever built. For starters, there's the trusty autoloader. There's an unfortunate habit of trying to stuff the gun of it. It wouldn't be unknown for the crew members to lose their arms with the autoloader picking up the sleeves and trying to ram that in the gun rather than the shell. But there's much worse. T-72 has its ammunition exposed, and it means that very often, if it's struck with the right sort of incoming round, the whole tank will blow up. It's a death machine, death for its own crew. The likelihood that the crews of the T-72 feared the tank almost as much as the Pentagon did has got to count against it in the great scheme of things. T-72 makes it to number seven.